Hi, I'm Alex Archbull, and I've been buying and selling antiques since I was nine years old. From basements to scrapyards, I'll look just about anywhere I can to find lost antiques and collectibles. And sometimes I'll go big and buy everything. I never know what's going to happen or who I'm going to meet. This is our life, this is our adventure, and this is Curiosity Inc. Hey guys, and welcome to today's video. I am going to try and tinker on the Daimler today, the old limousine that we picked up uh, earlier in the year, in summertime. Last episode, we got the tires on it. Um, I got a electric fuel pump installed, but I couldn't make it work. Well, I had been told that the car was switched over to uh, 12 volt uh, negative ground. But the truth of the matter was, the car was switched over to 12 volt, yes, but it's still positive ground. Uh, and that meant that my wires were backwards. So after swapping the positive with the negative, uh, now the red lead, which would normally be your positive, is grounded to the body. I have, hang on, wait for it. I turn key on. Hear that? I've got a fuel pump that works when the ignition is turned on, which is exactly what I wanted to have happen. Now, the trouble I'm having uh, is that there is a uh, airlock in the fuel line. This car is not run in probably, well, since 1990, it hasn't run off of its own tank. Now, the previous uh, owners uh, had cleaned the tank, so I shouldn't have to worry too much about that. It doesn't smell like stinky old gas in there. I think the tank is all right, but it's not drawing fuel through. Uh, I blew the line out. I heard bubbling in the tank, so I don't think I've got any blockages. What I think, though, is that there's a uh, large gap between the tank, which is way back there, and the line that runs up to it. I think there's a lot of air uh, in between. So I'm going to try and uh, get it so it will um, pump again. To do that, there's a couple things you could try. One is to mildly pressurize the tank, see if that'll help push the, the fuel to the point where this can actually just start drawing. Uh, but what I'm going to do is actually turn the fuel pump around or switch the hoses around, run a line out to a fuel can and pump gas into the tank the reverse way to try and fill that line up uh, just to, to prime it so it'll actually be able to, uh, to draw. That's gonna be happening this afternoon. Um, I had another errand I had to do though. And uh, I have to run to the bottle depot. The problem is, okay, Melissa's gone, Steven's gone, and my truck. Well, this is the second time this week that I've had fuel pump issues with the old Ford, which is kind of my uh, daily. Now, the Ford has uh, had to get towed into the shop. It broke down on the side of the road, it got towed in. Uh, so my only somewhat practical vehicle to drive right now <laughs> is the Citroen. It's just starting to snow, uh, so I'm going to run off and go run my errand of going to the Bottle Depot now before the snow gets any worse and then come back and continue working on the Daimler. Uh, yeah, I'm going to be that guy, the eccentric weirdo driving a car like this <laughs> in wintertime. Uh, but bottles are piling up and that was on my to-do list to do today. Uh, and incidentally, today's my birthday. I don't want to be stuck inside. Everybody's gone and I'm here at the house by myself, so I'm going crazy. I kind of want to get out of the house. So it'll be good to get the Maserati powered uh, Citroen out on the road. I've got brand new tires on it, so it should be just fine. Um, they did market these things as a year round car. I'm not convinced. <laughs> we'll see. Anyway, I'm going to load up and hit the road. Started up no problem after sitting for a while. You hear that noise, that means I have to put my seatbelt on. Incidentally, a lot of these old cars that I have, have a lap belt and see that little spot there? That is so you can choose to attach the shoulder belt, which is behind me. Um, shoulder belt is a little bit cumbersome, so sometimes I will just use the lap belt. And I always get people saying, Alex, you're not wearing your seatbelt, shame on you. I'm always wearing a seatbelt. It's just sometimes I'm wearing a lap belt, which you can't see in a video. So uh, we're gonna get the lap belt on. See, my buzzing stopped and uh, take this bad boy out on the road. Oh, it stalled on me. I guess it's a little bit cold. Let's see if we can get her going again here. No problem. Started right back up. We hit the highway before this snow that's happening gets any worse. It's 
strange as this sounds, this French car has given me kind of a new love for Italian mechanics. This uh, has a Maserati V6 engine, and I was always kind of afraid that an Italian engine would be completely unreliable and temperamental, and maybe they are, but this car sat for 14 years, 14, 15 years, started right up, and it's been proving to be uh, very reliable transportation, and it's fun, and it sounds good. Kind of have a new love for Italian stuff that I never really had before. Uh, mucho bella. <laughs> Uh, so anyways, I'm uh, off and on my way. Well, having a hatchback is handy. First stop at the bottle depot. So far, a success. Now, to most of you watching at home, the thought of driving a rare and classic and unusual car to the local bottle depot seems like an insane proposition. And it is, but it's also fun. And it's good to get these cars out a little bit. The roads are dry, I'm not taking insane risks. Um, but I do want to get back. <laughs> <laughs> before it gets much worse. This car has, I think it has a heater. It's not really doing anything right now. Um, not that it's terribly cold out right now. Uh, it is probably about minus 10 degrees Celsius, which is a little chilly. Um, I'm more worried about the windscreen fogging up on me and not having the inability to defrost it. Uh, so, you know, a quirk I'll have to work out for a future day, but uh, at least I'm getting one of the tours I had uh, on my list today, done. <laughs> the garage will be a little bit cleaned up. Uh, it'll be nice to be back home in that warm garage working on that car. One thing about driving this car in winter is that the suspension is so soft by design, a very comfortable ride. Uh, but what you don't get is a feel for the road uh, like you would with the stiffer suspension. And in winter, that actually is pretty important because you want to have an idea about what the road is doing. Is it slipping? Um, is your back end starting to move around so you can adjust? In this, you really have no idea because you're literally just floating across the surface. <laughs> I have a lot of faith right now that the French designed a car that will stick to the road in uh, all weather conditions. <laughs> but I don't think they were intending it to be driven in this weather. Probably not by a long shot. All things said though, I don't know if you can see behind me, there's contemporary cars that are broken down on the side of the road today. And the little Citroen just keeps on plugging away. If it weren't for the fact that I felt like I was driving about an inch above the surface of the road, literally feel like you're hovering, um, it would be a lot more enjoyable. But in summer, it's a luxurious experience. In winter, frankly, <laughs> it's unnerving. Well, let's maybe not do that again until spring. <laughs> I'm gonna let the, uh, car warm up a bit before I put it back in its resting spot for the season because I don't want to bump into anything and the back window is a little fogged up right now. So while that's warming up, I'm going to switch my attention back over to the Daimler, which is what I'm supposed to be doing today, not farting around taking stuff to the bottle depot. Um, so I'm going to grab one of my jerry cans here. This guy will haul it around to the other side and start running fuel line to see if we can make this thing fire up. And that is really the goal, that this will be able to fire under its own power, under its own steam. Now that the fuel pump is working, we should be able to make this thing go. Let's hope, knock on wood. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna disconnect the fuel line from up by the carbs, and I'm gonna use this line to actually feed into the uh, fuel tank that I've got sitting on the ground. Uh, once I reverse the order of that pump, it should draw fuel from the tank back through that uh, line, which I believe has a vacuum lock or airlock, hopefully uh, getting rid of that um, and uh, allowing me to draw, draw fuel from the actual gas tank. Yeah, I've never done this before, so we'll see. I, I have really no idea if, it, if it'll go, but I guess we'll see. I might not have to do my plan I actually went to go switch these hoses over and I had gas. I had gasoline at the pump, which means that it's drawing from the tank because I didn't put any gas in there. Um, so I am gonna let this pump up a little bit. 
I'm waiting to see right now. I have to be very careful because I don't want to. I don't want to flood the carbs. I also don't know what kind of condition the carbs are in from sitting that long. There is a primer right there. Kind of like on a motorcycle, like an old Norton or something. It's got like little primer buttons. You can prime your carbs. So I'm going to uh, prime the float and hope that this is getting fuel up to here. I can feel the, uh, the fuel line vibrating. So hopefully there's gas getting to these carbs. And uh, yeah, I definitely, feel, I can feel movement underneath my finger here. So with any luck, we're getting some gas in there and uh, a little uh, cranking and maybe, just maybe she'll go. Nothing yet. Oh, my starter got stuck. <laughs> Look, I have it off. There we go. Fuel pump is going. See, I wanted to make it off. I wanted to power it off the coil so that when you turn the ignition on, fuel pump starts, which makes sense, right? Um, I'm going to go out there and actually prime the carburetor. I'm going to put a little fuel in the carbs and see if that uh, helps it to draw. We'll try that. What I'm going to do is actually, I've got these uh, loosened off with the wrench and they're finger tight now. I'm going to get the uh, top of these caps off, fill these bowls with fuel. I mean, last time I did this, I want to make sure I flip it upside down so I don't lose the little gasket that's there. Last time I did this, the car started right up and that was without it uh, pumping fuel. Let's have a look and see what we're dealing with here. Yeah, they're bone dry. Not gonna start without fuel in there, are we? Let's set that off to the side for now. They're, these should be full of gas and then those floats will rise inside. Very simple system, very effective system. Um, but we need gas to get through here and into there and it's pumping part way up, but maybe just a little bit of gas and then uh, maybe it'll start to draw a little bit better. Well, we'll give it a try, right? Anything's worth a try right now. Okay, I've got the uh, bowls filled and you can see that float is floating nicely. This one, however, is stuck at the bottom there. Just give it a little bit of a nudge. It's floating away now and that should tell uh, the carburetor how much fuel to draw uh, into it. So it floats being down, not a great sign, but it should, should fire now. See, I'm going to get this all reassembled and put back together and we'll give it another go. I've got the caps back on, but I have a feeling I'm going to have to get a rebuild kit for these carbs for two reasons. One, the gaskets look a little dried out. The other is that there's a primer button here, which is all good and well, but it's missing or absent here. And that hole just goes straight through into the uh, chamber. And with gas pouring in there at any rate, there's a possibility it could come out the top. Uh, so I'm gonna have to really keep my eye on this to make sure fuel doesn't come spraying out because guess what's there? The exhaust manifold right underneath it. So not a great place to have uh, gas spilling out. So if I do get it started, um, I'll have to run around and check and make sure this thing isn't dumping gas all over the place. Uh, so let me get some of the things off the fender because the vibration might make this, uh, I'll set that here for now. The vibration might make uh, everything slide down. So uh, let me get a garage door opener. We'll open up the garage door and see if we can make it start. Good thing I got home when I did. Snow is really starting to come down now. I don't know if you can see it. But that'll start uh, turning into more than a misting before too long or a dusting. All right, car is in neutral. We should have fuel. Let's see if it starts up. Oh, do you hear that? Come on. Come on, and I'm keeping my eye through this tiny little crack. Hey, look. It's running. <laughs> Did I do it? Or is that just running off the carb? I think I did it. 
I believe the thing is right. It's actually not shooting gas everywhere, amazingly. I don't know how that's happening. Let's see what's coming out the tailpipe. Well, it's cold in here, so no more uh, steam or smoke coming out of there than it's coming out of my mouth, but... Oh! It quit, but I think we just about have it. Let's see if it starts again. Almost. Well, the good news is it wasn't dumping fuel out of the... Uh, the bowls there and the engine sounds pretty decent so i'd call that a success for today a running daimler now that i have a running car i'm really keeping my eye on the carburetor right now as it is pumping fuel from the tank successfully i don't know if i'm gonna be brave enough to drive it out i kind of don't want to let it warm up and fill my garage with exhaust although i do have the door open um, this is really just the first test run here. I'm gonna open up the other door. Oops, not close it. Okay, we'll get this camera turned around. So far, so good. I am likely going to order a uh, rebuild kit for that carburetor because I don't really trust those old gaskets that are on top of the uh, floats. But it started and it's running. Well, it, it, it is running. <laughs> it's probably working some old gas through. And there is a throttle adjustment right on the steering wheel to set your idle right there. We've got the um, fuel control. I mean, really pretty much everything you need to operate the vehicle. It seems to be running well enough now. I might be able to actually pull this thing out in the yard, put it in uh, drive but I am going to uh, get warmer shoes on and then try that in a bit. Here's where I'm at with the car right now. It seems to be starting fairly reliably now, idling nice. Um, I don't know if I have brakes or not. <laughs> I don't know that I'm going to uh, because it's snowing today and because it's not great weather, I'm probably not gonna drive it just yet because um, I don't wanna get stuck outside and then find that it's, um, you know, that I'm gonna be stuck. <laughs> uh, but let me show you uh, what appears to be working. Trafficators, you can hear them popping out. Um, this has a weird kind of semi-automatic transmission. So you actually put it into gear, depress the clutch and it'll lurch forward. Um, we've got, is that the horn? I think that's supposed to be the horn. I thought I had the horn honking earlier, maybe not. But there's my throttle. There's the mixture for the carburetor. It seems to be idling pretty good right now, so I don't want to mess with that. We've got uh, lights. Look at that. The uh, amp meter is working. It's not showing a charge. It's also not showing the temperature of the engine either. The uh, fuel gauge is reading a quarter of a tank, which is probably prob probably accurate because I just put a, uh, a gallon of gas in there. And what does that do? Oh, that's my dash lights. I like how that lights up. Your wipers, it's actually, uh, let's see. Oh, look. Wiper is trying to work. Okay. I guess you can disengage it with that little button there, but the wiper kind of works. This one is just, I think it's, this one is just manual. Doot, 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 like that. Really archaic. And I see Melissa pulling up now. This is actually kind of a nice birthday present for me to have this car running. I'm just gonna pop out and check that carb, make sure it's not leaking because that would really suck. Don't want to have any kind of fires on my birthday. And the carb is not leaking anywhere. It's just running tickety-boo. I seem to have uh, 
bit of condensation in the exhaust. There's the wife. <laughs> but I now have a uh, somewhat operable old limousine. That's just idling all on its own now, running off of the tank. I guess a little perseverance, a little, uh, you know, stick to it -ness. Is that a word? I feel like I'm making up words now. Perseverance, let's stick with that one. But uh, I got her going, which makes a really big difference with the, uh, you know, value and worth of a vehicle if it actually runs. I'm glad that uh, earlier this year I fixed this door because that could have been an issue. Hey, guess what works now? Yeah, I know. I'm gassing up the garage. That's why I got the doors open. Okay. I'm just afraid that if I pull it out, I won't be able to get it back in again. But it's running pretty good. Like this thing is just like, no, oh, it's chugging a little bit now, but overall it's running really decent. I'm just letting it run for a little while here because really nothing's moved on that engine in, gosh, what? Over, uh, what, 22 years? No, more than that. 1990, 32 years. This is the first time it's really run in 32 years. 1990. Boy, that makes me feel old. <laughs> you know, you feel old when you realize the year 2000 was 22 years ago. Well, there is some brake fluid in there, but not enough to do much of anything. Actually, I don't even know if that's the... Uh, there's two reservoirs here. I ordered a uh, handbook. What I should do is I should get something on the end of that fluid to see what it is. I don't have a shot manual for this vehicle, so I've been really trying to guess. Normally, if this was a reservoir for the uh, brakes, you would see it feeding over to the, uh, like the brake linkage of, of some sort, but I don't see that. But there's also another reservoir over on that side too. So I'm going to uh, do a little dip test here and see what fluid is on the end of a rag when I get it in there and maybe that will tell me what I'm looking at. Well the fluid is clear, but it feels more like a mineral oil, which that might be a chassis lubricant. Um, they actually had a uh, automatic uh, lubricant system like this who would uh, lube the bits of the chassis that needed it. I think it's that other piece over there might be for my brakes. I'm going to turn the engine off here and go check on the brakes. Okay, look where I've got it now. Key on. I'm not even touching the pedal down there. Push the button. Starts right up. No problem. I, I felt this was going to be a good mechanical vehicle, that mechanically there wouldn't be too much wrong with it. I think I was right. Um, other than the brakes, I think, at this point. But I'm going to check the fluid levels there and see. It should be pretty simple. Uh, if I can fill up the fluid and bleed them, I might be okay there too. So off that goes and around to the brakes. Well, I guess I was wrong. This one is marked chassis oil right on the top of it. So uh, that other one must be my brake fluid reservoir. So I'll top it up and see if maybe I can pump it and get a little bit of action out of that pedal. Sometimes it's hard to work on a vehicle by yourself because... You can't, I can't push the brake pedal in at the same time to see where everything's working down there. Uh, so I've called, I've summoned <laughs> for my wife, Melissa. There she is. Uh, did you almost wipe out? Yep. She's had a slippy day today. Yeah, a slippy day. Uh, so can you sit in the car and push the brake pedal? Yep. Okay. We're going to see what happens when we push that brake pedal in. Okay. Push the brake pedal in. Okay. And again weird this line looks like it's almost kind of getting in the way but that uh push it again that rod and actuator is going all the way back okay keep going that looks like there's probably going to be an access underneath the uh floorboard to check on the levels and everything there so uh i'm going to close this back up just want to make sure we're putting things in the right places Okay, I'm gonna pull the thank you. Oh, you're welcome. That was an easy job. That was easy? Okay. 
Uh, I just wanted to see what linkages, what the linkages did and where, where they all went. So I'm going to uh, pull up the carpet and see. There should be some kind of access underneath here. Well, there was no discernible hatch under the floorboard. And uh, I don't know what stuff is. Either that is the reservoir for the master cylinder or, or it's the reservoir for the fluid drive transmission. They take different oils and I can't trace that line back to see where the heck it goes. I'm gonna have to get this thing up on jack stands, I guess, and figure it out. I did find a uh, manual online for the car I should probably just wait until that shows up before I do too much else because uh, putting the wrong fluid in the wrong reservoir could cause a problem. I said reservoir. <laughs> marriage. Sweet marriage. <laughs> now that I have an English car, I'm turning to that guy from Princess Bride. Okay, that's probably enough for today. Okay, well, that's where I'm going to leave it today. The next thing I have to do on the car is uh, I'm going to jack it up. So I can access the master cylinder, which I believe is on underneath and uh, right by the frame. Uh, not exactly easy to get to, but that's where they put it. Uh, I'm going to order in the meantime, a uh, rebuild kit for that master cylinder, which thankfully they still do make. And uh, once I can stop the vehicle, well then I can actually start thinking about taking it for test drive, but that's not gonna happen anytime really soon. Uh, in fact, today it is minus 42 outside. Fahrenheit or Celsius. It's one of those kind of days. And it's actually going up 40 degrees <laughs> in, uh, I think tomorrow or Wednesday, uh, they said it's gonna go up 40 degrees and be minus two. Quite a swing when you get those cold fronts that push through. Uh, but I'm indoors, it's nice and warm. Uh, and I'm just gonna basically uh, take my time uh, online today and try and research and get the proper uh, rebuild kit for the car. So, uh, pretty big uh, improvement uh, since I got it. The driver door opens and closes, and uh, the glass is repaired. The wood uh, inner frame was repaired. Uh, we got new tires for it, and the car starts no problem. I could just turn that key, push that button, and it starts just like a real champ. Um, so, essentially, it's very close to being a roadworthy car again, assuming I can make it stop which is kind of a big deal. So uh, I guess stay tuned for uh, perhaps another update down the road. I am uh, yeah, feeling a little bit better about the car now that we're starting to see some progress happening with it. And hearing that engine come to life and it sounds good, no major noises or concerns there, um, might just be a decent vehicle. So thanks for watching today's episode, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I'm gonna go back inside and stay warm and uh, you guys have a lovely day. We'll see you all soon. And as always, bye for now.